Hello. <laughs> this is going well. Welcome to Crouching Tigers. Today we're going to be talking about the uh, John Lewis ad. Because John Lewis are in the news uh, for appalling half year financial results and they've just done this big ad and we thought that'd be an interesting thing to talk about. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. Open your eyes, look up to the skies and see. I'm just a poor boy, having no We're both asking the question, um, is it time for a rethink for John Lewis? I mean, there's no doubt that the advertising they've been doing over the last few years has been phenomenally successful. But the thing is, and why we're discussing it at length, is in many ways for the last seven or eight years, John Lewis has been an apology for advertising. And yet what you and I are saying, that it's actually advertising has changed so radically that now, even that kind of beautiful, skillfully made piece of communication isn't enough. What you've got in the John Lewis campaign is essentially the, you know, the shop window for TV advertising. So, you know, the advertising industry can look at the John Lewis ads and can look at the 10 million hits they're getting and go, oh, it's great. You know, TV advertising works. Here it is. It's in the newspapers. Everyone's interested in it. Yes, we can still do it. Um, and so when that stops working, it's interesting and you need to start asking questions about it. Advertising needs to have some sort of discernible purpose. And so, for example, the John Lewis Christmas ads, I understand that it's about the value of both giving and receiving a gift. And the purpose is, oh, if I go to John Lewis, I'm going to find the gift that is absolutely appropriate for the people uh, I love. And so what it is, it's driving people to the stores. <coughs> Whereas I look at this new ad and I go, actually, I don't know what you're asking me to do. What's it about? In a world in which, you know, increasingly people are blocking out paid for advertising. Um, it, you know, what's the value of that? Because, you know, because you've got something where the, the advertising industry goes, here's John Lewis, it's doing brilliant advertising, get, heaping awards on it. And yet, it's not addressing the problem that John Lewis have got, which is less and less people are buying stuff from their stores. So you have to change that. You know, the phrase you and I talked about <coughs> when we talked about this shift, essentially, in communication, which is a shift from TV to the digital experience, particularly in YouTube, is YouTube is about real people telling you real stories. People are not interested in artificially confected stuff. What they're interested in is also authenticity, real people. They want to see the colour of their eyes. They want to see these people and go, right, what are those people really telling me? What are real people telling me? It's actually, it's a very compelling, differentiating, emotional story to tell, <clears throat> which is this person who's stacking that shelf, who's behind the till, they're a real person and they have a share in this business. What YouTube 
and actually I suppose Facebook as well and uh, other social platforms, but principally YouTube has allowed brands to do is to move away from uh, being advertisers and to become publishers. Charlie Mayfield is a really smart guy. I saw him talking once and I thought he was a fantastic speaker. And as a CEO, he spoke really compellingly about things like humility and collaboration, teamwork. <clears throat> and I, in a way that I really believed him. And I think that is, you know, that's the thing that they've chosen to focus on in the advertising, which is the notion of partnership and the, the you know, the business model and the fact that they're part owned by their, their staff. Now that to me is really interesting. How about increasing that so that uh, uh, if you buy at John Lewis, there are ways in which you can become a, a share owner too. You know, okay, maybe these are kind of Love it. No, keep going with it. I love that. Like that. When like... you're part of it. So <laughs> that's the core idea. Be I... a part of it. And so I... maybe they should be looking to try and get us to be expand a part of it. Expand that partnership. I love that thinking, which is expand the partnership. Now, the John Lewis model ought to be a better way of doing business. The Unilever uh, vision ought to be a better way of doing business. So both of those mm. are, are wonderful initiatives in the business world. And they need communication actually, they, they need that to be out there, to be understood, and to be discussed, and for <clears> people to engage with it. The challenge is to make those stories really, really interesting. Yeah. Wouldn't it be fantastic if John Lewis actually took their store out to places? And if we were to create a John Lewis truck, it would take a John Lewis um, uh, stock and take it to places where it might be needed, where they can sell it at absolutely bargain basement prices, maybe they're seconds or whatever, but take the store to the people. Something again that we've said before, which is don't focus on the product, focus on your audience and what are they interested in. To me, that's the thing, that's the challenge for, for, for John Lewis and, and Waitrose, which is that they've got some fabulous stories. I believe that they could be a brand for good in the world, they could be about giving, they could be about community, they could be about collaboration, they could be about real people. There are lots of very rich areas there, but, it's, but the idea has got to be something where you go, whoa, can we really mm. do that? Uh, if we were able to go and talk to these people, I think what we'd say is that um, there's a fantastically powerful idea behind Waitrose and John Lewis already. It's not a kind of a genre of emotional TV advertising. It's this core idea of more people being involved for the greater good of a greater number. Bang! Now, we're not talking about post-capitalism or destroying capitalism, but we're talking about enlightened capitalism. And enlightened capitalism needs to plug into this notion of openness, accountability, transparency, and kind of equality, and breaking down barriers between Com companies and customers and bringing those two together. So I love your thought of like participation, customer participation. I mean, it's actually, it's the line Corbyn used, isn't it? Not for the many, not the, for the few, for the many, for the many, not the few. I think that's a really powerful slogan moving forward. I like to believe that there is a hope, that there's a glimmer of hope out there in the darkness. And it's, it is people like the John Lewis company and it's people like uh, Unilever who are about recognising essentially the power of people, democracy. And well, thanks very much for watching Crouching Tigers. There you have it, our thoughts on uh, the John Lewis partnership and Waitrose. Any comments, please leave them in the box and we hope to see you with our next video. His last name. Uh, <laughs> Jiggy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we had wasps dogs, for the picnic, chickens, and now wasps. We have chickens yeah. in the supermarket. <laughs> Cut.